Hey, aloha my internet family. Welcome back to Practical Printing. Today is Sunday, April 30th, 2017. Wow, time goes by. So my question is, are you guys ready to learn something and have some fun? Then let's do this. Okay, here we are in Fusion 360. We're going to start off by creating a sketch, picking our plane, and then we're going to hit C to create a circle. I'm going to drive this out to the constraints of 150 millimeters and zoom it back in a bit. Then I'm going to create a second circle. This time I'm going to make this one 210 millimeters. Now the reason I went with 210 millimeters is that is the diameter of the heat bed on the CME CNC H2. Now we can grab this circle and kind of just drag it over here where we want it and just get a rough ballpark in that area. We can hit stop sketch. Now we can hit E for extrude, pick the area that we want and one of my favorite features in Fusion 360 is that you can use mixed units. So although we've been drawing everything in millimeters so far, I'm going to make this 4.75 inches, which is I know, which is what I know the height to be of the um, of the CME CNC H2 bed. Now we're going to tidy this up, make it a little bit prettier. I'm going to hit F for fillet. I'm going to select this edge, and I'm going to give that about a 15 millimeter radius going to hit F for fill it again, select this other edge. This one I'm going to make a little bit bigger, give a 20 millimeter fill it to, hit OK. Now we get this really neat looking teardrop shape. Now as you can see this is a solid, this is one piece, it's not hollow, and I will show you in the next step how we're going to make that into a hollow uh, for a trash can. But for now what we need to do is hit make, 3D print, Select our body, make sure that send to 3D print utility is unchecked, and we're going to export this to the desktop, and we're going to just call it junk bin. Okay, so now we have our slicer opened. Now, I usually use Simplify 3D, but I've been experimenting a little bit with Slick 3R or Slicer, however you would choose to pronounce that. Um, so we're going to start there. I'm not going to cover a lot of settings. I'm just going to cover how we're going to take that solid that we created and turn that into a trash can. So under print settings, what we want to do here, there's an option for vertical shells under layers and perimeters. We're going to hit spiral vase. It's going to prompt us and tell us that spiral vase mode requires one perimeter, no top solid layers, 0% infill density and no support material. And then ask if you'd like it to make those adjustments for you. So you click yes and then I'm going to make my bottom, even though it's four, I'm going to take that up to about six just to give it a little bit more meat at the bottom there. And the top bottom fill pattern, I'm going to leave that as rectilinear. Uh, one trick I have found with Slicer is that it does tend to crash a bit on the Mac. Um, so I found that any settings changes I need to make to print settings, filament settings, or printer settings uh, should be made without a model loaded. Otherwise it has a tendency to crash. As long as you're making the changes without the model loaded, it seems to be pretty stable. Now I think the reason for that is, is that any time you make a change to any of these settings, uh, it tries to re-slice on the fly. So let's gra grab our model and we're going to just drag and drop it and dump it in. And you can see it looks like a solid here in 3D view. However, when we click over here in preview, you can see that the spiral vase turned it into just an empty shell. So we have the solid layer at the bottom and then we just have our single layer there. We're going to hit export G code. We're going to leave it called junk can. Now, I use an initial for one of my printers and then something to indicate the filament that I'm using. 
in front of it so that way when I know the file, I can tell it was sliced for high temp PLA and that it was sliced for B, for bruiser, which is the, the H2. So we're going to save that. It's going to come over here and create the G code for us. And um, I'm going to go ahead and queue that up on the printer and I will meet you back here once it's done. Okay, so as you can see when we were modeling this, um, I created this 210 millimeter curve here so that way it would mate up with the bed surface and follow the contour so that it could sit right there besides the printer. That way if I just wanted to be able to brush things into it, um, you know, brush things off the bed, it closes that gap and keeps it nice and tidy. Now, I want to quantify by reiterating again, I am by no means proficient or a modeler in Fusion 360. I, I think what I was showing you here today was simple enough uh, that I could convey what, what I was trying to show well, but if you really need in-depth tutorials on Fusion 360, there are plenty of other ones out there on YouTube and on the web that will point you in directions better than I can. So with all that said, I hope you enjoyed this week's episode of Practical Printing. I hope it was informative and taught you something new, or at least gave you some ideas for something to try for yourself. Um, I mean, it is a really handy practical print just to try to keep your workspace around your printer a little bit cleaner. Also, if you are still watching, um, there are three days left as of the recording of this for both mine and How I Do It's 100 subscriber giveaways. The links for those are down below. If you're missing this uh, or watching this after the, the giveaways have over, ignore everything I just said. You missed it too late. But if you are watching it, don't forget to enter to win. Can't, can't win if you don't enter. So with that, I wish you all a great weekend. Aloha, and we'll see you next time on Practical Printing.